Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the new Federal State of China's program, Miles Trial. We will be here every day uh, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to share the latest updates on Miles cases, um, especially with the trial is you know going on uh, since last Wednesday. Um, and s some of our families, uh, members, and supporters might have already known about Miles' case. He was charged by the United States government with 12 federal counts. Uh, most of the counts were financially uh, or investment related um, and and miles has not plead uh, has never pleaded pleaded guilty to those counts uh, and his trial started since last Wednesday and this is actually the day five uh, of his trial and the government already started to call different witnesses uh, cross-examination also resumes today as well so we are here uh, today to share the latest updates about today's trial and we're very happy to uh, to introduce feather from uh, the southern district of New York uh, who just came out of the courtroom. Everyone from the LSA TV and everyone's watching our live stream right now. And hi, Ella. Thank you so much for having me. As you can see right now, I am outside of uh, New York South District Courtroom. Um, and I am just got out of the, the courtroom um, after the trial today. So, um, it was uh, it was a pretty long day, and we saw we finished. Uh, um, they finished questioning the uh, the third witness, and uh, now we began to questioning the uh, fourth witness. Right, Feather. Uh, you know, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about what happened in the morning, right? Obviously, yesterday was a lengthy questioning about third win, uh, the third witness. And for you know our new viewers, uh, the third the third witness actually claimed uh, that he was uh, a, a former participant of the political movement, the whistleblower movement, and he was also a mm -hmm. former volunteer within uh, you know our organizations. And he did claim that you know he invested in different. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, related to VOG and G clubs. He also demonstrated some physical pieces of G fashion clothes products, jewelry pro uh, products, uh, and other, you know, G fashion purchases proof uh, to the court and to the jurors as well. So tell us a little bit of how, you know, Mr. Guo's defense team finished the cross-examination for this witness, particularly this morning. Yes, so uh, as uh, many of you know that uh, yesterday um, the prose uh, prosecutors, the government, uh, took a most of the day questioning the third witness, which is a former fellow fighters of ours. Um, and we only started a question, uh, to do the cross-examination uh, af like late afternoon, it's like half, it's, I would say only an hour and a half left um, of the day. And this morning we can resume our cross-examination for a third witness. Um, yeah, we start off about um, talking about um, G fashion, and a lot of G fashion. The four G fashion items was brought up to the court again, and uh, he was questioned uh, whether if there were the only four products he bought from G fashion, mm -hmm. and he claims no, he bought over 30 G fashion items from the website, and. Um, the, these four specific items are selected um, and uh, by him and as well as uh, the help with government. Uh, for example, the government suggests, oh, bring each item uh, in different category. For example, pants, clothing, um, hats, jewelries, jewelries such as the whistle necklace. Um, and uh, we talked about the farm lawn as well. Um, because it was a really long day, I don't have my notes right now, but what I can remember by how they concluded with the farm lawn is that um, I remember specifically, they were talking about how the from farm lawn, um, uh, it's a three year contract. Con con contract. Um, and um, so um, since last year, since the, the, the farm lawn was program was purchased, what, what was invested, um, there's still until next year till the farm loan program um, uh, is terminated. But um, he claims that he thinks he believed that what if the uh, the UK farm leader is resolved, it's removed um, by the uh, uh, or our um, uh, Himalaya Alliance, that the farm the contract does not exist. And then it's very interesting because that's what he believes that how the contracts and legal document works. Um, so our lawyer Sid asked him. Uh, it's very, it's a very funny uh, c conclusion. He he mentioned, oh, um, 
is this your legal conclusion then? Um, he's like, he's like, I believe he said yes, or he does. He said I didn't know. Um, but and instead ask him, um, where did you learn? Where did you go to for law school? Apparently, this question was uh, sustained because it was not allowed to ask. And uh, and yeah, um, so the the, the it, it left a, I, I believe it left a, a huge impression on the on the juror that this uh, witness had not a lot of legal training or uh, knowledge about this legal documents and how and when uh, he can get his refund. He doesn't have a really uh, clear understanding of how the contract worked and um, that he will get the refund as soon as the contract is terminated at time. So it's right. still within so, the limit. Right. Yeah. So Right. So what you were saying was, you know, several documents were presented in the court uh, today. You know, as we mentioned yesterday, there are different types of evidences or uh, exhibits, you know, that were being brought to the courtroom to the jurors, right? Uh, and the jurors was able to actually examine all of the G fashion items, uh, you know, one by one through hats, um, uh, silk Donny pants, uh, right? T-shirt, black T-shirts, and a, a 24K gold uh, jewelry uh, whistle necklace, right? And and so, yes. uh, you know, yesterday in our live chat room, there were family, uh, you know, families on, and our viewers asking how was you know closing pieces or how was jewelry pieces uh, got involved in this in this case. So I, I would just you know simply answer. Uh, it was you know uh, one of the witnesses called upon by the government trolls um, to. You know, to reveal his purchase history with one of the entities that were uh, mentioned uh, in the yes. indictment of Miles, and, and so uh, mm -hmm. you know the uh, the fashion company was called as G Fashion, and so the third witness mm -hmm. uh, you know claimed that he bought various pieces of G Fashion uh, products that he does not believe in the overall quality um, of the products that he purchased, despite, you know, he had made different times of purchases and, and over, you know, maybe, uh, you know, tens of thousands of purchase and, uh, you know, uh, amount all of the items. But he stated to the jurors that he personally did not believe in uh, that the quality actually was matching uh, with the price, and he brought in, you know, the actual um, items, uh, uh, fashion items, um, to the public. And so, so Feder, you know, obviously the third witness has, um, you know, uh, was, you know, uh, majorly, you know, uh, occupying yesterday and and this morning half of the day as well. And the government, uh, and uh, you know, I was noticing that just from all of the NFSC uh, speaks report that. Uh, the third witness also talks about that he was volunteering or he was helping or get to know that there were protests uh, related to, um, you know, uh, uh, again, you know, protests against the CCP. Yes. He mentioned about his volunteering experience as a broadcast technician and some yes. of his broadcasts were actually related to, um, you know, contents that was related to, uh, you know, NFSC's pro, uh, protest against Chinese Communist Party. How would that, uh, you know, uh, being mentioned in the court today? Uh, well, he, we we uh, we confirm uh, the volunteer works he did. Uh, for example, uh, doing live streams, transcripts, and uh, making posters and follow, you know, streaming. Uh, he meant, he I believe he claims to that he have streamed over like thousands of uh, live streams or videos um, online during the time of protest. Um, and I, I, the, this first day of questioning the third witness, I, he mentioned how he, he thinks that the protests and a lot of contents um, were were mean. Or, for example, like, you know, the banner saying uh, CCP running dog. Mm -hmm. But that only have been brought up or uh, meant, well, the, once in the protest about one specific individual. And um, none of this was appointed uh, by Miles School. And he was, uh, I, I believe he was talking about the Capitol Hill, that none of those banners was, was appeared during that protest. Right. And all these are confirmed ap after uh, the cross-examination. Right. So apparently all of the topics that, you know, the government calls upon uh, the witness yesterday was brought up again by our defense uh, with, you know, more careful questions. Right. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it is my understanding that today the government also called upon the next witness, uh, which was, you know, reported to be a former employee uh, of some of the entities that were mentioned in the indictment. So brief, uh, you know, us a little bit about, you know, how 
uh, the fourth witness was called a pound to the court. Was it before lunch break or was it afterwards? Uh, it was a little bit before the lunch break. So, um, you know, the introduction, first we start off with uh, the individual questions, like where you live, what's your name, and what's uh, what's your experience with uh, with the, the defendant. Um, mm -hmm. And it was, yeah, it was a little bit before the lunch break. And uh, we learned about the, this um, this female witness uh, was a former employee of a mile school um, starting in 2018 to 2020, around two years and a half of um, employment time with working for for miles uh, mile school. Um, and this is and then and then the the government team delved into more specific details about um, how was the, the the job interview like how did he how did she brought up to the interview how was the interview and how was uh, the environment that Miles was in like very specific um, and also um, a lot of works that she was involved in for example in Rule of Law Foundation um, in uh, Guo Media. Um, and uh, as well as lifestyle, a lot of questions on lifestyle, that, like housing, um, housing, security guards, and uh, we have shown a lot of photos as well of Miles's family, and a photo of her and Miles, and as well as uh, Miles and, and his wife, and and a lot of times that Yvette Wang was mentioned um, in the uh, direct examination. Right. So, well, you know, when government called upon the fourth witness, um, you know, th did they specifically ask about her involvement in T Enterprises? Uh, and, you know, did the witness express any, uh, you know, strong attitudes about her past experience uh, with Miles? I would say overall today um, we we know that she might be experiencing some some um, some unwellness um, physically. Um, her volume was pretty low, and a lot of times are uh, a lot of people couldn't hear clearly. Um, I would I wouldn't say he, she expressed a lot of um, negative attitude towards her past experience. In fact, she made eye contact uh, with Miles after before when she walked out of the the courtroom um, for lunch break and they smiled at each other um, so um, and she explained further uh, later in the question that you know uh, everything she's done was also part of her job but um, there's some belief that she made that work she's done work she's done for miles that she thinks wasn't right uh, at the time Right. So, you know, obviously, you know, she chose to testify with the government and, and there were, you know, there must be reasons behind. Um, and, you know, we forgot to ask one very important question, you know, at the beginning of your interview, right? How was Miles today? Obviously, you know, it's his day five um, and it, it's the second day after the Memorial, uh, Memorial Day holiday. Um, and it was very intense. You know, the court documents has been updating um, and, and he and his defense team has fought very hard every single day. And the questioning with each witness, you know, is lengthy for, for a defendant and for his team as well. So how was Miles today? How did, you know, how does Miles. he look like, um, you know, was he smiling uh, at any of the supporters who went to the courtroom today? You know, was he chit chatting with Marshalls or his defense team again? Miles looks still very amazing. like like usual, like any other day in court that I have seen. Um, he was wearing a navy, dark navy suit with a black tie with white shirt. And she was, he was smiling and no, nodding at us and uh, making eye contacts. And uh, he's even looking at the witness and the jurors and they were, yeah, his gaze is sharp, but very friendly and smiley. And um, we feel the friendliness within his uh, looks and as well um, as you know, communicating with Sid, with his lawyers, and he has demonstrated, I believe, would demonstrate very good um, oral communication skills to us, and we were very surprised. Um, yeah, Miles is doing amazing. Right, right, and and you know, adding upon on you know what Father has brought us uh, today, we want to make uh, minor corrections on the fourth witness. The fourth witness um, you know, uh, is a female witness. First of all, she is a former employee of some of the entities that were mentioned in the indictment. Uh, however, she herself is not a private employee of Miles. 
Um, so that is, you know, a distinction, uh, you know, uh, in, in her past employment history. And obviously, you know, Federer, I don't think um, they were able to actually complete a cross-examination for the fourth witness today. Am I correct? Yes, unfortunately, we did not finish the cross-examination. Um, there's still a lot of questions uh, to be asked um, by our uh, lawyer, uh, Sabrina. Um, I also have to mention something about the energy today. So when we start questioning the fourth witness, um, the prosecutor, the government team, was uh, you know doing the usual questioning, and then uh, question and answer it was it was it was it was very long and was slow. Um, like I would say, the the tone was pretty much neutral, and it, like like I would say, maybe they've been rehearsed, or maybe that's something um, you know keeping up the pace. So you know, there's 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 less things to to be. Um, there's less catch in in the response, and then uh, for the jurors to 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 caught upon. Um, and but when Sabrina started the cross examination, you know, of course, all our fellow fighters are really hyped up, and we're really excited for that moment. Um, Sabrina brought up um, the energy I've ever seen before. Of well, I've only seen her once during the the other cross examination, but uh, today her energy was on the rooftop, and we're really impressed about uh, questions and her logics and a lot of things she asked have really gone back each one of the arguments that government have have made with the witness. Right, and you know, for for our new viewers, Sabrina is one of the leading attorneys in Miles' defense team, um, and so she gave a very powerful opening statement last week, right, when uh, when government was trying to give a mini indictment to the jurors, to the public, she actually. Um, you know, expressed ab about her understanding of Miles' family's histories, of Miles' prosecution histories, um, and and by the Chinese Communist Party, and, and how you know CCP was actually still chasing after Miles, even you know even since Miles fled uh, from Communist China. So it was a very powerful statement. I'm sure that uh, that powerful opening statement still left a very heavy impression among the jurors. Um, and so it was very happy to hear that the defense team is keeping, you know, is keeping the energy up uh, and and asking, you know, questions with great logics out there. So, um, you know, a feather, give us, a, you know, a little bit of ideas about, you know, what specific arguments were the government trying to make through witness three and through witness four, um, and. And, and you know, and and how you know how these witnesses were being brought to the court or being presented to the juror today. Of course, uh, there's a couple. Well, there were a lot of arguments, but there were a couple that really caught my attention. Um, it was um, well throughout a long questioning, and there's one that started with I think it's the the security team. So um, a lot of people. Well, first of all, the government start questioning. So. After the, the the long introduction of who this witness is, is and her experience, working experience, and very the closeness with uh, between her and Miles in the past, maybe give people an impression that she knows a lot of things that other people, other witness might not be able to to bring on a table. But she made this um, this argument where um, she doesn't believe that Miles needed security and there's no uh, existent uh, danger um, to her knowledge. And uh, so our defense lawyer um, specifically mentioned um, how how he chose um, how he chose to have security because there there is um, uh, existed danger. For example, in the, the in the Sherry in the Sherry Netherland Hotel, um, when when let's see when this witness was brought to the interview. Her name was on the the building security list, so she's allowed to um, to to be let in the ho the hotel into the the house. And this security um, this protection it's made by Miles and also for Miles's family. Right. So and, um, yeah. Yeah, so obviously, you know, uh, the government was trying to lay foundations for every witness, uh, you know, that they called a pound, right? Uh, and, and mm -hmm. you know, and somehow that, you know, we've seen a variation 
of the of the witnesses. Obviously, the first two witnesses were um, have very limited knowledge about the entire mm -hmm. uh, you know matters that were brought up in the indictment. And the third one, it sounds to me, was more portrayed to the court as a victim of the investments. Uh, that you know many of the arguments that he was the, the third witness was trying to say were that. He did not actually believe in the investments or in the purchases that he made, and, and now the fourth witness was, you know, was how the government was trying to give another perspectives by calling a pound on former employees. So, uh, yes. you know, just the variety of the witnesses here. Um, do you think mm -hmm. that you know that more questioning or more witnesses will be called a pound, um, you know, in, in in the upcoming days and weeks? Yes, of course. I definitely believe that there will be more witness um, that uh, the government believes and knows a lot about the, the witness or can prove all those arguments uh, in the indictment, uh, allegations in the indictment that government made. Um, yes, yeah, so we look forward uh, to see more witness um, in this week and because it's all just the beginning of this week. And uh, the, we still have to see at the end of tomorrow's questioning for the witness four. Um, it, as I was mentioned before, that really the government team is trying to paint um, us a picture without a lot of details, and there's only very one-sided and uh, the, in the storytelling. And our or or defense team lawyer was trying to fill out the blanks that the other side of the story that the jurors and people should know about right. about this this whole thing. Yeah, it, exactly, right? And that's why, you know, the cross-examination exists in the courtroom and and, and and that's why, you know, the government always bears the burden to prove their allegations first. Um, and, you know, uh, up till now, you know, to my understanding, Miles has not stated anything in the courtroom, uh, you know, himself, right? Because it was, it was the government's time and not the defense time, uh, you know, to speak uh, for the defense. Am I correct? Yes, absolutely. Right. And so, Feder, thank you so much, you know, for uh, briefing us on the latest report of what was happening in the courtroom today. You know, obviously, I, I knew, that, you know, you have been into the courtroom since day one and it was very intense for you, uh, you know, since last week and until today. So thank you so much for bringing these news to us. Thank you, Ella. I wish to give more updates in the future. Absolutely. Thank you, Feder. So, folks, uh, you know, we're very happy because uh, one of our supporters, Kevin, uh, you know, who also came from, uh, just came out of, of uh, you know, the courtroom, and he was ready to actually present more details of what was going on today. Thank you so much for coming to the studio, um, you know, uh, and, 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 you know, brief us a little bit of what's going on in the morning. Obviously, you know, they've completed, uh, you know, the third witness cross-examination. Uh, are there any highlights uh, in terms of questions and responses for the third witness? Yeah, so, I mean, I'm not sure how much uh, Feather talked about on the mm -hmm. show before I got here, but basically, yeah, like you mentioned, they, uh, they finished uh, cross-examining the third witness, and, um, you know, it was really just Sid, which is Miles' uh, lawyer, mm -hmm. who uh, was cross-examining the witness today, uh, basically trying to, uh, you know, hint the jury at, you know, how... Uh, the witness should have, you know, I guess, uh, read the agreements more mm. carefully, I would say, because um, at the end of the day, he is a real estate uh, agent mm -hmm. and you know, he, he, he does advise uh, clients on transactions, right? And even though uh, one of the questions that said asked uh, was overruled by the judge, I still believe, you know, that seed of doubt was planned in the jury. And then... Um, what specific <coughs> question do you still remember? Uh, yes, so it was about how if he, you know, advises his clients on transactions. Mm. So I was really trying to hint, to hint to the jury about how, you know, uh, it's similar to how uh, the connection between uh, the businesses and Miles are. Mm -hmm. And then he also, I believe, said also tried to, you know, uh, mention that uh, the VOG was, mm -hmm. you know, the investment was separate mm -hmm. from the other uh, investments. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, there I was actually a sidebar uh, between the judges, the defense, and the prosecution. And uh, I guess in the end, the judge didn't allow the question, but once again, I believe the seed of doubt was planted. And then, uh, you know, after that, the third witness uh, um, cross-examination ended, and then they brought on the fourth witness.
But I guess, I mean, before I talk about that, I guess the most important thing that everyone wants to hear is how Miles was today. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if Fad already touched on that, but, you know, he entered the courtroom the same as yesterday, uh, smiling, you know, he waved to uh, our fellow fighters. Uh, there are a lot more fellow fighters in the courtroom today. Uh, he was wearing a dark blue double-breasted navy suit and a white shirt and black tie. And, you know, uh, as usual, he was very, ch you know, he, he was very cheerful, mm -hmm. very high-spirited and energetic. And then, um, yeah, I guess, I'll, you know, I'll talk a bit about the fourth witness? Yeah, yeah. Right, uh, you know, before Kevin yeah. introduced the fourth witness, right, a subtle detail is that if people actually read all of, you know, what Miles wear, you know, every single day, he never wear the same suits or same ties every day, right? And it was his etiquette, it was his clothing etiquette, and it was his ha habit that he understands that, you know, all of the clothing of how you look is your feng shui in, in Chinese, uh, is about how you look. And so he changed his suits and, and, and shirts and, and ties every day. And that's how, you know, he faced the challenges in the courtroom. That's how he faces all of, you know, the difficulties and challenges in his life. And so, uh, so Kevin, right? And obviously, you know, when you mention about that there are some doubts about how the third witness understands about yeah. legal documents, yeah. about the transactions that he made in the past, yeah. and about the arguments that the government was trying to establish through the third witnesses. So, Brief us a little bit on, you know, that uh, the new witness uh, today, you know, obviously yeah. we learned from Feather that yeah. the fourth witness was a former employee yeah. of uh, some of the entities that were mentioned in the indictment. Yeah. And so what, 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 what were those main arguments um, from the fourth witness today? Yeah. Actually, uh, before we, I talk about it, could I talk about mm -hmm. the third witness? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not, yeah, so um, uh, in, in, during the uh, cross-examination, there was a stipulation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, from what I remember, stipulation is you know an agreed-upon statement between the both defense, parties. Both parties, yeah. And I, I assume it's not evidence, but mm -hmm. it's just to let the jurors know, you know, give more background context. Mm -hmm. And so it was about how there's a document. There's about I think uh, seven points. It was talking about how you know Miles is the main target of Operation Fox Hunt. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know diving a bit more into the background of. Uh, how Miles is the number one enemy of the CCP. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I mentioned stuff about how, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a law enforcement agency said that the CCP was, you know, paying for and, you know, giving food and supplies to uh, protesters of Miles. Mm -hmm. As well as, you know, how the CCP pressured uh, U.S. social media platforms to, you know, remove Miles's and his associates' accounts mm -hmm. and, you know, deleting his, their posts and, you know, blo uh, basically just censoring them. And also how, uh, you know, they keep trying to repatriate Miles like for example, they I, they talked about how on uh, in May seven May twenty seventeen, you know there were five Ministry of uh, Security agents, safe security agents, trying to repatriate him, and then they talk about the George Higginbotham, you know Elliot Boydy and Leahy Lum Davis, uh, you know, uh, lobbying on behalf of foreign agents mm -hmm. to repatriate uh, Miles back to China. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think that's something that's you know very important. Gives you know, because I think you know at this point the jury is thinking about how you know. The defense is trying to prove that, um, you know, Miles is the number one enemy of the CCP, mm -hmm. and this this is proof, right? This is what right. was really useful to the juror to determine that. Mm -hmm. And as a lot of the you know the case facts hinge on this exact you know fact, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, that was something exciting to see, and uh, it was you know it's one probably very surprising for the jurors as well if they've never heard of it. Right. Yeah, as Sabrina said in the opening statement, um, you know there'll be eye-opening and surprising facts, uh -huh. and I believe that was one of them. Right, and how was that stipulation mentioned, you know, with the yeah. third witness? You know, how you know how did both yeah. parties, and obviously, you know, we understand what stipulation is, mm -hmm. and so all of what you were saying, was it public yeah. stated to the jurors, or was it a sidebar conversation? So it was actually just, you know, the, def the defense, um, you know, at a stand, just noting that, oh, uh, judge, I have a stipulation, mm. and then just saying the stipulation. Yeah. And and did the jurors give out any body language interaction? Uh, you know when yeah. uh, when our defense gave uh, the the stipulation. Yeah. So I mean, um, all the evidence you know is presented on the screens. The jurors have screens in front of them, mm. and so uh, the document of the stipulation was also presented. And uh, all I believe all of them uh, were reading it closely, as well as listening. 
Right. So, you know, obviously it's another an, another powerful statement yeah. that our defense gave right since last yeah. week. And, and, you know, the the first opening statements that our defense gave uh, absolutely give people of some of the backgrounds of Miles families about his experience of fighting against the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah. But absolutely, you know, learning more about Fox Han operations, yeah. learning about how secret agents was trying to repatriate, uh, you know, Miles from United States back yeah. to China is, is definitely eye opening for everybody. Yeah. Um, and so, it, what happened after the stipulation? Did government, uh, you know, uh, pose any objections, or, or did the judge uh, conclude the questioning for the third witness? Uh, so, I mean, since it was a stipulation, and as mentioned earlier, it was agreed upon by both, both parties. parties. Mm -hmm. So, right after the stipulation, um, the defense just moved on to another question. Mm. So just to let you know, give more context on the previous questions and you know for future questions. Right, right. Yeah. And what was the previous que uh, previous questions before the stipulation? Yeah, so I mean, he, the previous questions were just talking a lot about uh, some of the testimony that the witness gave during the uh, prosecution questioning. Mm -hmm. For example, asking about bank accounts, asking about his investments in you know GTV, G clubs, G clubs memberships, stuff like that, as well as as well as his um, Himalaya coin uh, quota agreement. Mm -hmm. Right, we, we're now pulling up some of uh, you know our uh, live chat room. I'm just gonna read it all out. That uh, you know, one of uh, the viewers said that I'm very surprised uh, that Miles hasn't been <laughs> assassinated. I support him and his followers. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Um, and and you know, another viewer said I noticed too. Uh, you know, angry the older class, as in America, has been so conditioned to think a certain way. The younger people have broke that on uh, and embraced critical thinking ideas and truth seeking. Right, and then the and you know, this was primarily why we're doing Miles trial every every day. Right, and so Kevin, let's move on to the fourth yeah. witness today. Um, and you know, uh, uh, first of all. Did the judge or did the government introduce about the next witness yesterday? You know, when uh, when the court was concluded, were you aware yesterday about you know another new witness will be brought in today? Uh, no, not. She just mentioned that. Um, the judge just basically mentioned that. Oh, uh, will the will the prosecution bring their next witness? Mm. So I mean, I'm assuming that uh, until the judge says oh, that was a last witness or whatever, then they'll keep you know calling more, upon more yeah. witnesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And brief us a little bit on her, you know, her background mm -hmm. and how, you know, she presented himself yeah. to the court today. Yeah, so the fourth witness, uh, her name's Karen Mastrello. So she's actually used to uh, work for Miles. She worked for, for some of the entities yeah, in Miles', Miles. indictment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, you know, she lives in New Jersey and she worked for those entities from 2018 to 2020. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, she's, she, her main role was on, on, the legal documents was, mm -hmm. uh, I believe, project ass assistant and project interpreter. Project assistant and interpreter. Interpre yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, I guess if you want to say translator, mm -hmm. she said she she knew you know she spoke English, French, Mandarin, Spanish, Italian, German, you know, mm -hmm. just a few. So, uh, lots of languages, and um, they also talked more about her role, like what she did, right? Uh, she also was you know. Uh, I believe on the board of the Rule of Law Society as uh, you know president and treasurer, mm -hmm. and then uh, they, the prosecution also has asked about her experiences in China. Uh, she used to work there for five years before moving to the U.S. in 2017, and um, you know they talked about her interactions with uh, Yvette Wong, mm -hmm. as well as you know her work at Golden Spring, uh, New York, where she was employed. And then um, they also did show you know a lot of evidence as well, such as you know pictures of Miles, Yvette. Uh, Miles's daughter and wife as well, and uh, Miles's daughter's boyfriend, and um, uh, th so there were a bunch of you know prosecution uh, prosecution questions related to this, and then afterwards there was the cross examination by uh, Sabrina, mm -hmm. and then uh, th basically Sabrina you know uh, as usual just cross examine ask questions uh, based on the previous testimony uh, by the uh, prosecution. Right, and so what are the specific, you know, um, uh, questions that that our defense uh, brought in today? You know, obviously, um, you know, this is a, a, a the first, I would say, the first, you know, quote unquote, former employee of some of the entities uh, went on appear on the court and and, yeah. and to testify and to state about their experience of working for some of the entities in the yeah. indictment. So, what were uh, you know the defense yeah. questions to her today? So, I mean, at first, I believe that, um, you know, during the prosecution questioning, uh, the witness testified that she didn't really agree with some of where the funds were spent. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And so when the defense started uh, cross-examining her, uh, they, they made it clear that, you know, there's also a Golden Spring Hong Kong. Mm. And there's a Golden Spring New York and a Golden Spring Hong Kong, right? They're, they're two separate entities. Right. And so the defense was asking if she knew anything about Golden Spring Hong Kong and, you know, where the money came from, mm -hmm. or how the money even went into the Golden Spring New York's mm -hmm. uh, bank accounts. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, the witness had absolutely zero ideas. And so, uh, you know, after a bit of questions back and forth, um, they moved on from that. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, you know, uh, the witness was asked about Pangu and whether, you know, she knew that Miles' family actually owned Pangu. Mm -hmm. And she responded how uh, she knew Miles was a developer, but that she didn't know that it was the, he was the, the owner. The actual owner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also talked a bit about uh, Miles' Beijing home. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, they moved on to the employment contract mm -hmm. between her and Golden Spring, New mm -hmm. York. So in her prosecution questioning, she, you know, she sort of hinted at how, you know, not that she was mistreated, but that she was just satisfied with some of, you know, the things that she experienced. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Sabrina, uh, Mouse's uh, defense lawyer, she brought up the uh, employment contract between her and Golden Spring, mm -hmm. New York. And she went down to a clause in the contract that said it was an at-will contract. Correct. So basically, um, both, either, parties. Yeah, both parties could terminate the, you know, the employment, the employment at, at any, any, time. any time, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, even though, you know, she, she was dissatisfied, she still stayed out of her own free will. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm sure the jury, you know, saw that she it was out of her own free will and choice. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then the, you know, Sabrina moved on to talk about how many times, you know, the prosecution uh, lawyers met with uh, the witness, you know, many, many times. And however, she was not able to recall, you know, the exact dates mm. that she met with, um, you know, the prosecution lawyers. Mm. Uh, Sabrina asked literally like, oh, I, I'm assuming she has a list of all the dates, right? right. And she asked like, oh, uh, August 2023, that's the first time the witness was contacted, then moved on to like November and then went to May. She mentioned a couple of dates in May. Um, the witness just said, I do not recall. Mm. And she only recalled, you know, a few dates, literally like Monday and uh, yesterday. Mm. And then after that, um, they moved on to an evidence. There was a fo there was a picture of the witness with um, you know her arms around Miles like this, and mm -hmm. Miles you know imagine his head is here. Mm -hmm. And um, so in the beginning, the prosecution tried to frame it as oh you know they had a really intimate relationship or mm -hmm. you know really close relationship between you know an employee employee and employer. Mm -hmm. But um, the Sabrina actually made it clear that um, you know it was actually a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So there were many people in the office at the time. Uh, everybody did the photo shoot together. Yeah. It was yeah. just happening to be yeah. one of them, right? Yeah. So I, I, I think I heard Feather mentioning it earlier, but yeah. So the government is trying to paint a picture while you know Sabrina's and the defense team is trying to clear that picture up, right? Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, I think this was pretty important as well. Um, Sabrina asked or clarified with the witness that she left because of medical reasons. Mm. So. Um, you know, she left because, not because, you know, she was fired or because mm -hmm. she left because she was dissatisfied. She left because, you know, physically she was unable to. Mm -hmm. So that was, I think that was something pretty important to be cleared up. Mm -hmm. And then after that, um, you know, uh, the, Sabrina also asked about working relationships between, you know, the other employees as well as, you know, uh, such as William J, which is, you know, the lawyers mm -hmm. called the finance guy. Mm -hmm. And also talked about, you know, the Sherry Netherlands hotels. And also, you know, asked about more about how, uh, you know, gifts to her. So uh, Sabrina mentioned that uh, Miles actually, you know, gave gifts such as a Hermes, uh, you know, puffer jacket, stuff like that to show, you know, sort of how, you know, she was treated well while working at Golden Spring, New York, com you know, compared to what, you know, the prosecution is trying to paint. Mm -hmm. And then uh, other than that, um, fi she it ended with, um, you know, talking about how, this is actually very important about the uh, trip to France. Mm. So uh, I believe after the um, it was around um, 2018, right? 20, yeah, yeah, around it, 2018. It was about yeah. the first year that she started work, you yeah. know, for those entities. So yeah, there was mm -hmm. um, you know there was in France there was a CEO that was murdered, mm -hmm. or that Miles predicted was murdered by the CCP, mm -hmm. and Miles actually sent the witness and four security guards who were ex NYPD to the site in France to, you know, investigate. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so basically, uh, that was funded by the, uh, you know, the Global Roll Foundation. Mm -hmm. Foundation. And so they were, talk they were talking a bit more about that. And mm -hmm. um, then they brought up Bannon about how, uh, you know, 
they were asking questions about how if she knew he was, you know, vocally anti CCP. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, finally they ended with, you know, Bannon's role in the Rule of Law Foundation in society and mm -hmm. how, you know, its aim and objectives are to help dissidents and, you know, people who escaped CCP China to, mm -hmm. you know, through such things such as, you know, asylum applications, mm -hmm. you know, navigating the new language and, you know, et cetera, just stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so, you know, there were two, I think there were, you know, two important, um, events that you yeah. mentioned today. One is about the stipulation, right? Obviously, yeah. it was a very strong signal to the jurors yeah. about Miles' position, mm -hmm. you know, when he fights against the Chinese Communist Party, yeah. this is the treatment that the CCP has done to him. Yeah. And and this is the CCP's overseas campaign, you know, against yeah. any of the dissidents and Miles was happened yeah. to be the number one yeah. enemy out of it. Yeah. And, and the second important fact today is that um, the witness did testify about her trip to yeah. France and that trip to France was very important to the history of the whistleblowers yeah. movement. As you mentioned, right, Miles yeah. predicted in the broadcast uh, that one of the CEOs, the CEOs of Hainan Airlines, uh, Wang Jian actually, yeah. was murdered by the Chinese Communist Party. And it was even beyond the trip because at that time Miles did broadcast with you know the um, you know the the journalist and the um, the witness yeah. herself when she was at France. There were photos. There were videos related to that investigation that was went public. And later in the year of 2018, Miles and uh, also held uh, you know a press conference yeah. of giving out the public about the evidences and the results of the investigation that they have conducted. That includes videos video clips of the hotels, uh, you know, on-site photos, mm -hmm. interviews that was conducted, uh, you know, secretly, uh, and interviews uh, related to, you know, the um, to uh, the hotel managers, to the security guards and the managers. So there were lots of details that were actually released in, in you know, in 2018 about the investigation. So I think it was very important that, you know, when the witness mentioned about the things that was actually happening in the past, and that you know, every, like every party, like judge or prosecution team or the defense team, can find those clues in the past videos of Miles. Yeah. Yeah. And so, when you know, when when the judge conclude today's trial, uh, like today's questioning today, obviously, I think you know the cross exam examination will resume tomorrow morning with the mm -hmm. the, the exact fourth witness. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Right. Right at nine thirty. Right at 9.30, okay. And so, uh, when you, uh, were there lots of objections from the government when our defense team were trying to question the witness? Yeah, I believe so. There were lots of objections, you know, on both sides. I think mm. maybe around 30 something. And I, uh, the, you know, the, the split was pretty equal. As for, you know, uh, sustained or, uh, you know, overruled, I think it was also pretty equal. Um, I, I noticed there were definitely, a, I, I believe, a lot more objections than yesterday. And so, you know, I guess that just shows sort of like the, the questioning and how the prosecution and the defense are trying to think, you know, trying to, I guess the word is, you know, bait out a certain response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, were there any specific reactions or I mean, obviously, you know, we've heard, you know, uh, you know Miles' attorney sit leading the cross-examination yeah. as well. Sabrina has led the cross-examination yeah. as well. Uh, as far as, of, you know, the collaborations of yeah. defense team, um, what do you think of the energy look like to uh, t the public today? Yeah, uh, today it was definitely, there was quite a few laughs uh, to, to be had today. Um, so you know, the first was um, yesterday, uh, so Sid, Miles' lawyer, he was speaking and he actually Oh, he was trying to present evidence. He actually said, um, you know, the government would like to ex uh, present it to evidence. And he was like, oh, sorry, I did it again today. And then the second one was when he was um, cross-examining the third witness. Mm -hmm. um, he was, so they were talking about, uh, you know, the farm loan and how, uh, you know, how the witness uh, lost money in the farm loan. Mm -hmm. um, and so the witness mentioned that he believed the contract he signed with the farm, which says that, you know, he'll be paid back interest uh, you know, eight percent over three years, mm -hmm. but then there was an extension of that loan. Mm -hmm. But he believed that you know that extension and that contract was invalid because uh, that contract was signed with the UK London farm mm -hmm. and David Dye, who was the previous head, who mm -hmm. which you know who was let go and mm -hmm. the farm was dissolved. So he believed that you know it was void. And then Sid just said, "So which law school did you go to?" So it was you know it was pretty funny. Um, the entire courtroom did laugh, even the jurors laughed as well. Mm. And so. And then uh, during Sabrina's, um, you know, uh, cross examination, there's also you know a couple laughs to be had. 
Right, right. And, and so, you know, uh, when prosecution team did a questioning, did, you know, did, did they bring any laughters to the courtroom? No, that's <laughs> not. I, you, know, you know, completely unbiased, um, the prosecution statements, same or questioning is always, you know, very straightforward, you know, very, you know, calm, very, I guess I would say collected. Mm -hmm. There's no, not really any, you know, emotion, you know, just sort of robotic. And mm -hmm. I guess you could tell through the jurors' reactions, you know, some of them, I want to say, look quite, don't look as interested mm -hmm. as when the defense lawyers are speaking, you know, especially when Sabrina's speaking. But um, especially today, it was much more lively, I would say. Uh, during breaks, you know, the jurors were like, you know, looking at their notes, you know, paying attention, as well during, you know, when both the sides were speaking. And um, they were seemed much more energetic than yesterday. Right, right. And and so you mentioned about, you know, there were more supporters who actually went to the courtroom yeah. today. Uh, so how was the courtroom today? Was it filled up? You know, was it, you know, yeah. was it empty? It was, yeah. you know, the, tell us a little yeah. bit. Yeah, the court was pretty full today. The entire public uh, gallery was completely filled. Wow. And there were also, you know, a bunch of reporters as well. Mm. And so it was definitely more more busy than yesterday. So Were they the same reporters that you recognize uh, every day? Yeah, yeah. And I think I saw um, Inner City Press as well. Mm one of the ones I recognize. But, um, you know, as the trial goes on, obviously, um, there are probably going to be more people showing up, more reporters as well, trying to, you know, cover the case. Right. And were there, you know, suspicious uh, people that you believe that might have connected with Chinese Communist Party in the courtroom? Um, I mean, I noticed, uh, I think I noticed the one of the uh, reporters from Phoenix TV again. Mm. The same one that's been going to the trial for, you know, the past, ever since, you know, jury selection started. So basically the entire trial. Right. And then, you know, for our audience on Alpha TV, right, Phoenix TV is one of the state run uh, TV sta stations by the Chinese Communist Party. Um, and we actually did a little bit of investigation of that female reporter, uh, you know, who who happened to give out the first report and, and you know, and, uh, and broadcast uh, uh, for the Chinese Communist Party on Miles case. And this female reporter was, uh, you know, specifically had lots of photos with uh, diplomatic representatives of the Chinese Communist Party. So it was definitely interesting and, and investigated, uh, you know, under how Phoenix TV was controlled by CCP and how these uh, you know, you know uh, reporters that, that that those television uh, that you know state run propaganda media sent them into the courtroom to follow the case, um, and so so Kevin Ray right, uh, obviously you know from 9:30 to like almost 3 p.m. every day it, yeah. it seems to a lengthy process every single day yeah. and you know. During the process, did Miles take any notes? And, you know, obviously, I knew that he has the habits of has pens and notes, yeah. and, and and take down you know questions and and communicate with the legal team. How was his uh, you know reaction when different witnesses came to the court yeah. today? You know, during the witnesses, you know, the questioning of the witnesses, he was very calm, you know, attentive. He was always looking straight ahead, and occasionally uh, he would check. You know, he would look towards the jurors, and he was often smiling at the jurors. I mm. noticed that. Um, maybe he was also looking, you know, at each one, smiling. Um, but he was also, you know, as usual, just speaking to his lawyer sometimes when there were breaks, uh, you know, taking notes as well. Right, right. So uh, we can absolutely tell, you know, from your description that Miles is, you know, every single day that he's energy yeah. that has never changed and, yeah. and, you know, how focused he yeah. is when he was at the quorum, right? Yeah. And so when you you know obviously uh, it sounds to me you know maybe half of the cross examination has completed with uh, you know the fourth witness do you think that our defense team will raise more questions or um, you know tomorrow with the same witness you know we w uh, you know we would assume that more witnesses will be called upon by yeah. government tomorrow right yeah so i mean sabrina was still uh, cross examining the fourth witness mm -hmm. uh, the judge just ended early cuz it was about to you know, past uh, 2.45. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming tomorrow in the morning at 9.30, the fourth witness will, uh, you know, be questioned again by mm -hmm. Serena, and then the judge will give the uh, prosecution a chance to re-cross-examine. Mm -hmm. And then back and forth, you know, the judge will give Sabrina time to uh, cross-examine. Right. And then after that, if, you know, if both sides uh, have no more uh, questions, then uh, it moves on to the fifth witness. Right, right, right. And so, uh, you know, so far, you know, did the judge give any uh, any other spotlights on, you know, pending requests from both sides? Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've seen some yeah. court, you yeah. know, documents that has been updated. Yeah. Nick Blum Davis also filed a declaration uh, and a motion to quash the subpoena uh, that my, uh, you know, that the case has served to her. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, did the judge mention about mm -hmm. anything today? 
No, the judge just ended by asking if there's any special requests. Mm. And then I believe the government uh, mentioned that nothing that can't be brought up in the morning tomorrow. Mm. And then the defense, I believe, just said, uh, you know, no, nothing. Right. And so we noticed mm. that, you know, yesterday the government did file a motion to include, you know, certain exhibits uh, con pertaining, you know, a post from G News, post from Getter to be included as evidences and Miles' team uh, filed an objection yesterday afternoon. So in the beginning of, uh, you know, today's court proceedings, did the judge mention about, uh, you know, her decision of yesterday's, uh, you know, opposition from uh, from defense? Uh, no, I don't believe so. Right. So obviously, you know, lots of things have been yeah. going on in the courtroom. Lots of, thing, uh, of things has also been going on with the court documents mm -hmm. as well. And so with everyone, you know, who, you know, potentially is interested in Miles's case, please, you know, go to our website, nfscofficial.com, and you can click on the court documents so that you will be able to find, you know, mm -hmm. court documents. You will be able to find indictment and relevant background information about this case. And that will tell you a little bit more about, you know, where the case um, than is right now and obviously right follow us on miles trial from every day uh, you know afternoon from three to four so uh, you know kevin it sounds to me like you know the agenda of the trial now seems to be repetitive because yeah. it's the government to bear the burden to prove yeah. their allegations and so since last friday till you know today the day five of the trial mm -hmm. it sounds to me like the agenda al almost looks the same right with yeah. each witness who was called a pound to the court always you know direct questioning first and then cross-examination and you know in, in you know in between there might be objections overruled yeah. or sustained but it sounds to me that uh, the agenda hasn't changed yeah exactly and um, you know there also sometimes be you know the judge or the defense or prosecution mm -hmm. would request a sidebar and mm -hmm. then you know, there'll be a short break for everyone uh, you know except the judges and uh, the, pro uh, the lawyers and mm -hmm. they'll discuss whatever they want to discuss and then they will come back but you know other than that you pretty much you know hit the nail on the head it's just witness gets called in mm -hmm. Uh, prosecution questioning, defense questioning, then cross-examination, uh, you know, for both parties. And mm -hmm. then if no further questions, they move on to the next witness. Right. And then, you know, we have we have no idea how many uh, witnesses there will be. You know, it could be anywhere from like, you know, 20, 30, 40, you know, if there's time for that. Uh, the trial is set to, it's estimated to end on July 12th. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you know, things could change, you know, impossible to predict. So we'll see how, you know, as you mentioned, there were subpoenas. We'll see how that goes. Maybe there will be more witnesses called in. There will be more uh, motions filed. And so that will definitely affect the length of the trial. But, you know, just based off today, um, you know, in whatever happened last week, uh, you know, it's very, very routine, very routine now. Right. And, and so what will be, you know, mm -hmm. uh, some specific elements that cause a sidebar conversation mm -hmm. in the courtroom? Yeah. Was there concerns about yeah. how the question was being asked yeah. or were there concerns about the evidences that yeah. were presented to the court? Yeah. I mean, I noticed that, you know, a bunch of the sidebars were called about, you know, facts that I guess I wouldn't say irrelevant, but weren't, you know, mentioned before. Mm. Like, for example, uh, I remember yesterday, um, Sid wanted to talk about how, ask the witness, uh, if um, he knew that, you know, Sarah Way of VOG mm. has been uh, convicted in a court in Arizona mm -hmm. for fraud. Mm -hmm. And so the judge actually called a sidebar for that. Mm. Then today, I, if, if I remember correctly, uh, there's uh, Sabrina asked a question about, or Sid asked a question about, you know, the CCP. And um, the judge also called another sidebar. And so I believe, you know, just questions like, or topics like these that might, you know, uh, you know get more sidebars. But I'm sure, you know, as the trial goes on, uh, the, both the lawyers will, you know, know more and more about how the judge operates and, you know, which questions they can and cannot ask. Right. And then that'll make it much more smoother. Right. Well, I, I think another, you know, important element that Kevin was just mentioned, right, mm -hmm. that when Sarah Wei, you know, the specific, the specific name that was brought up by, I believe, the third witness, right, yeah. because he talked about how he was actually connecting with Sarah Wei yeah. about his investments related to, you know, uh, VOG, and that our defense team actually raised that, you know, if he was aware that yeah. Sarah Wei was already convicted of fraud yeah. uh, in Arizona State. Yeah. So that obviously gives a more solid background yeah. of how 
you know, the third witness's, you yeah. know, investments was yeah. related to people who are not actually on the indictment yeah. or even not mentioned in the indictment yeah. and people who are actually already convicted here in the United States. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that would absolutely give the jurors, mm -hmm. a, a, you know, a solid legal background mm -hmm. of understanding the people's relationship mm -hmm. and as well as, you know, the, in, the investment nature yeah. of the, um, you know, the witness had, had, had done and had testified. Yeah. And so, Kevin, you know, what should we look out for, not just tomorrow, but, you know, the, the, you know, the, you know, the days for the rest of this week. So obviously, you know, more witnesses will be called upon. And it seems to me like, you know, the government and defense team took at least one day to go through one witness because, mm -hmm. you know, obviously it was not the first two witnesses who just have very limited knowledge about one subject matter. Yeah. All of the witnesses they, they called upon right now it takes at least one day. Yeah. So, uh, you know, what can we expect for the rest of the week? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think by tomorrow it looks like uh, for tomorrow this witness, this fourth witness, will be uh, done mm -hmm. pro being cross-examined, and they'll bring in another, the fifth witness, and mm -hmm. then uh, on Friday probably you know bring another witness. Hopefully, mm -hmm. you know if things go smoothly. But so you, I guess you can expect to see two more, two new witnesses possibly. I would say two, three max, mm -hmm. and then you know next week they'll probably bring in more witnesses. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you said, the pattern seems to me that you know it takes about a day, you know, a full court day to cross or to question a witness, right. just because of you know all the information, all the evidence they have to present and the questioning, right. you know, that they have to get through and you know show the jury. And um, you know, I think one thing that should really be paid attention is just you know keep following you know us on NFSC speaks. You know, follow us for updates. You know, please pay attention to the trial. Uh, we mentioned it before; it really is the trial of the century. Uh, you may not think this, you know, the outcome of this case affects you, but believe me, it really does. The CCP is, you know, everywhere, mm -hmm. has infiltrated America, and you know, just like look at what's happening in this case, right? Um, you're gonna see, like uh, Miles's lawyer said, you're gonna see a lot of surprising and eye-opening information. And you know, in the past five days, you know, or two days since the two three days since the trial started, you know, a lot of information that uh, we weren't even aware of also came out, right? Mm -hmm. And such as the you know bank accounts being on the OFAC sanctions list, you know, you know, uh, and for the jurors, you know, the HNA accident where the CEO was murdered by the CCP, right. and stuff like that, right? right? So it's you know very important. This trial is super super important historically. Right? Yeah, yeah, and, um, absolutely. Please keep paying attention. Yeah, absolutely. So, folks, we, we can take a look at our NFSC Speaks X account because uh, this is where we are going to post timely updates of every day's trial proceedings. Uh, uh, and, you know, everybody, you know, follow us on uh, a Getter on Alpha TV with New Federal State of China. Uh, also, you know, you can find us on NFSC Speaks at our X account on uh, Instagram. Uh, you know, obviously Getter and uh, any other social media platforms that you can think of. We will share timely updates of every day uh, about Miles' trial and also about, you know, court documents update as well. So, you know, it, it is, you know, a lengthy day and a lengthy week for everybody. But, uh, you know, we are we are excited to hear more from the courtroom and we're hoping and, and praying for Miles and, you know, every single day, you know, for him to, you know, return safely home mm -hmm. uh, and obviously we have full confidence in Miles and his defense team to handle the challenge in the courtroom to present all of the facts to the jurors uh, and to you know bring out you know how Chinese Communist Party actually persecute Miles in the history and how CCP's overseas you know uh, misinformation campaigns and Fox Hunt operation campaigns impacted not only Miles as the number one enemy but also you know like Kevin mentioned everybody you know in this country and so definitely stay tuned we will share more updates and Kevin, thank you so much to join us today. Thank you, Ella. Thank you.